What's up, Robert? Hey, how's the background music? Is it too loud? Y'all let me know. I think Georgie Porgy is an appropriate song for George, George Craig Lewis. Don't you agree? Georgie Porgy. You know, G. Craig Lewis's name is, his first name is George, right? That's in the video I did yesterday. In case y'all didn't know that. And since we in the business of, you know, telling on folk, thought y'all may want to get that little information. He said, just giving you some click and like. Who, me, Robert? You talking about me, Rob? Music level good. Thank you, Sean. What's up, sir? Let a few more people come in before I read these comments. And I must warn you. So, so let me let me ask you a question real quick, Robert. My question is, are you uh, are you in support of G. Craig, or are you here because you disagree with what I'm doing? I mean, either way, I'm cool. Maybe we can have a conversation with. I can I can invite you on a live, and we can have a conversation. I've been inviting people from uh, ABC, and of course, you know G. Craig, but you know he's not going to come on and. And, and defend himself or respond to anybody uh, who disagrees with him because to do that, then we have to be held accountable for the words. But you know, um, what's up, Kevin? How you doing, my brother? So you know, yeah, I just wanted to ask you that question, uh, Robert. Are you a member of ABC? Oh, you asked. Okay, okay. No, because I was just, I'm, I'm asking. I'm just asking. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. Because either way, it didn't matter to me. I just wanted to know because maybe we can have a conversation. Um, Maybe, maybe Jay Bryant can come in. I'm pretty sure he'll be watching if not watching now on the low. Can you only know, do that secret, you know, uh, account stuff? I'll talk about that later. I'll talk about that later. But anyway, um, y'all recognize the song? Y'all recognize the song? Who recognizes the song? Y'all recognize the song? <clears throat> Just heard you only doing this for the likes and clicks. Yeah, that's that's what all it, you know. People always say that when they're mad and they can't really, you know, form a defensible argument. Um. So yeah, my brother was good, man. Appreciate it, man. Thank you. But I, I've I've been asking people. Uh, I've been asking those who defend G. Craig Lewis who support his ministry um, I've, been, I've been waiting I've been waiting, waiting, waiting uh, for my questions to be asked uh, be answered, excuse me regarding what I've asked them for the past what is it, what is it now? oh, what, what, what music is that playing, Martin? this is Georgie Porgy this is Georgie Porgy I thought this would be appropriate since G. Craig's first name that letter G stands for George, so I decided it would be a, an appropriate song to to play. Georgia Porgy. Uh, remember Eric Benet and Faith Evans. Don't act like y'all don't don't you know don't listen to secular music. Don't don't get too Craigite on me. All right, uh, that's a new word that I, that I found out uh, from someone, one of my uh, witnesses who attended uh, that church. I call it a cult, but anyway. Um, Hey, Joe's, how you doing, my, my brother? So anyway, yeah, so I just thought it'd be an appropriate song before we start and before I read the comments uh, that I have been getting ever since uh, I put these videos out. Uh, and if you haven't, um, let me just read this real quick. Let me see. Okay, so I'm going to add that one. Thank you very much. Appreciate it, my sister. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, so... 
let me just jump in and uh oh real quick you, will you guys please share this <laughs> christiana oh <laughs> uh, that's cool you can do that you're not going to hell you're not going to hell for singing georgia Porgy. okay you won't i decree it. i declare it i guarantee it um yeah, that's, you know, so, <laughs> um, so yeah, yeah, if you can, if you, if you guys can start sharing this, I've already made my live public, so, you know, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to get, in, get into the, uh, the comments, but as I was saying, um, I wanted to basically update you all on some things, and, um, let you know that the comments, uh, the testimonies, the statements from people who attended ABC, who have, who are affiliated or have been affiliated with uh, EX Ministries, who know G. Craig Lewis, I have been getting all kinds of responses, uh, correspondences, uh, correspondence, excuse me, with uh, with the video. I do appreciate it. Even for those who don't agree, that's fine. It's cool. Uh, I mean, give me facts. Uh, I don't really care about feelings. I, I really am concerned more so uh, about facts. So um, please share the videos. Uh, my, my purpose and goal is to raise awareness. It is, it is only for the purpose of opening eyes, opening the eyes of people who are caught up in cultic churches. Um, you know, I think we think or believe that cults only exist outside of Christianity. And unfortunately, that is not true. That is not the case. Uh, you have people within uh, Christendom that are part of cults. And, and, and the sad thing about it is they don't know it. And, and some of you who are on this live right now, God has delivered you from cults. And in particular, God has delivered some of you from the cult of uh, G. Craig Lewis and uh, ABC. He calls his church uh, Adamant Believers Council. I have renamed that church and called it now, henceforth and forevermore, until they repent, which I don't foresee happening. The name is no longer um, Adamant Believers Council. Their name, in my, in my view, based on their uh, behavior and how they treat people, is another bad cult. Another bad cult. That's what ABC stands for, um, in, in my view. So, <clears throat> um, in, in light of that, I wanted to update you on some, uh, on some, on some more uh, statements, on more information that I have received. Please keep the, please keep these uh, comments coming, uh, because it is going to help other people. Um, I have I have agreed to not share or disclose the names of people who have uh, confidently uh, shared their experience with me. Don't have to, um, don't need to, um, because after all, you know, it's their story. But I, what I have done is fact checked it. What I have done is uh, checked and made sure that whatever was said can be confirmed can be substantiated, can be supported, can be buttressed with objective evidence. And every last statement, every last witness testimony, every last comment, all these people, different people, but the same situation tying into the same common denominator, and that is G. Craig Lewis. George, George Craig Lewis. This man... His quote unquote ministry is not a biblical ministry. And if God has delivered you from it, please don't think that God just delivered you so you can just get out and not help get others out of that place as well, too. Now, of course, <clears throat> some of you were like some of these people that are still in that place. They didn't see it. You didn't see it, rather. They don't see it. And so through prayer and just through information, you should be able to articulate. You should be able to defend and describe and show proof and evidence why places like that are cultic. OK, so I want to read some some more 
um, some more testimonies and some more statements. And of course, I've already, you know, uh, made sure that these statements will be in confidence. Um, you saw one of the one of the statements that I already put up earlier today, and that's just one of them. I, I, again, I'm constantly getting uh, responses to the videos that I have posted on YouTube uh, regarding regarding G. Craig Lewis, regarding uh, EX Ministries, regarding uh, Adam and Believers uh, Council. Uh, all I ask for you all to do is to share the information. The same way you share posts, the same way you share stuff that's funny, the same the way you share other things. Listen, people are being deceived, okay? And I say this with all serious. This is not a joke. People are being deceived. And most people that are being deceived are those who don't know their Bibles. And most people that don't, that don't know their Bibles are young people. I'm not saying that old people don't either, but the majority of people in this generation that don't know their Bibles are young people. Okay? And so with that being the case, we should do everything we can to inform, to instruct, to disciple our young people to think biblically. And some of these people don't have fathers in their homes. And so what happens is these, these pimp preachers that may have started off, started off good, but now they've resulted in, you know, in, in wickedness and manipulation. They take advantage of that. So I want to read. Um, I want to read a, a, a few of these uh, witness statements. And some of these things are going to shock you. I'm just going to tell you right now. Some of the things I'm going to read to you, some of the things I'm going to share with you are going to shock you. So just be ready for it. OK. And, and, and again, this is not all that I have. I, I have other things and I'm not going to give it to you all all at one time because I, I want I want those of you who watch this, those of you who read these these statements when I put them up. I want you to let these things marinate. I want these things to resonate in your in your mind because these are real people experiencing real situations from quote unquote real churches and churches like this thrive because we don't have biblical accountability when you don't have biblical eldership when you don't have uh, people holding each other accountable and having equal authority these are the kinds of things that happen so G. Craig Lewis is not the only church not the only institution, not the only organization that are going to do this kind of stuff and that gets away with this stuff. But what helps and what stems and what turns the tide and what kind of like holds and pushes back, pushes back on this kind of stuff is when you and I take a stand and call this stuff out. That's the only way the enemy is going to be dealt with when we expose his lies, when we expose the subtle Sinister, silent attacks of the enemy. It is the only way that we can stand and hold our ground. I want to read to you. <clears throat> I'll read to you one of these right now. Um, and again, there there are a few of them, but I, I just kind of like picked off uh, picked out some some of the uh, the statements that I've got and received today. Uh, this person says. My son and his wife were in Dallas visiting and had planned to go to Sunday service at ABC. He had also planned to care, planned to hopefully, excuse me, meet with George, known as G. Craig, and give him a gift card to one of his favorite restaurants. He wanted to make peace with him from disagreements theologically, which stemmed from here it is, which stemmed from a comment he made, which is uh, he made on social media regarding Kim Davis. A, uh, the clerk who did not want to sign the wedding license for a homosexual couple. He disagreed. He, meaning, you know, the person's son, disagreed with George's stand on the issue and was blocked. All because of a disagreement. Not disrespect, not slander, not misrepresentation. A simple disagreement that was made publicly on a public site by a pastor. There was also some tension because my son intended to marry a member of his congregation, his now wife, a union that George did not readily approve of. My son had followed EX Ministries for a long time. 
attending two of their events in Dallas and purchased most of the ministry's DVDs. He and his wife really had a lot of respect for him and my son previously reached out to George several times via inbox on Facebook in hopes to reconciling their differences, but he was not well received. When they arrived at ABC, he was met by young men, that is security, who were armed and made that clear. They questioned him and ended up accepting the gift card, but he was told to leave and to never come back. These young men also laughed at and mocked him. He and his wife left heartbroken by the rejection and way they were treated. Afterwards, my son received a phone call from a now member who made it crystal clear of the legal implications if he ever attempted to contact George Luke Craig Lewis again, including a restraining order. This all happened back in 2016, and as my son wished, I did not say anything about it at the time. He and his wife chose to forgive him and move on with their lives. I was deeply disturbed how a man of God could treat anyone this way. I would also like to note that since that incident, none of the members no longer have any communication with his wife. She was excommunicated, which really hurt her. And so I asked more information about this. And uh, about the security team who approached this young man. And the, the, the parents said this. They didn't take the guns out the holster, out of the holster, but they showed them. So imagine they, th this young man and his wife goes up to ABC to try to meet with G. Craig Lewis to try to reconcile. He brings a gift card and to my understanding and knowledge a gift card that was for G. Craig Lewis's favorite restaurant. He knew that he liked a certain restaurant, and so he bought a gift card as a peace offering. Drove to Dallas, pulls up in the church parking lot, only to be greeted with armed security, who show their weapons to this young man and his wife, who did not pose a threat. They stated their purpose and business for being there only to have the gift card accepted, but then rejected. Now, let me say this real quick. We know that suicide among young people is on a rise. And we know that our young people do not have that many uh, examples of godly role models. Imagine, God forbid, had this man, this young man and his wife where they had committed suicide because of the sheer rejection and embarrassment that they received from people who proclaim and profess to be Christians, but treat their fellow brother and sister in Christ as though they were not, as though they were impending threats. Or imagine not even suicide. Imagine if they say, you know what? I don't want to have anything to do with Christianity because, you know, there are people that are out there like that. And they ended up joining a false religion. They, be they became Muslims or became Mormons or became Jehovah's Witnesses. You know who would have been responsible for that? You know whose blood would have been on their hands? Had that had happened, you, George, your hands. This is how you treat people who disagree with you. I know this is true because I have statements after statement after statement after statement after statement of people who have expressed respectful disagreement and request dialogue with you, George, as their pastor, only to be shunned, embarrassed, intimidated, and then excommunicated and ostracized. Now, let me also address in this, in this statement that this person shared with me. How do you excommunicate a person for a non-sin issue? 
See, this is why I tell you that ABC, another bad cult, is exactly that. Because scripture teaches and scripture gives us principles and precepts by which a person are excommunicated or disfellowship. And they are and simply are unrepentant, known sin. What sin did this young lady commit whereby now she had been put out of a church? I'll wait. See, what I, what I do know, that's what cults do. What I do know, that's what Mormons do and Jehovah Witnesses do and Scientologists do. New Age, that's what they do when you don't agree with their view. Now that you committed in any 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 sin, you just don't agree, and they put you out. They they only do they not just put you out, but they tell people once you're put out not to talk to you anymore. But some of you will still go on and defend this man. Some of you will still go on and make excuses for this man, and and some of you will try to trump up lies for this man. And 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 I'll just ask the question. Upon what authority does any man have a right to put out God's sheep from the flock? When there when there is no. No evidence of unrepentant sin, there is no clear, irrefutable evidence of persistent rebellion. Exactly, Xavier, exactly. It's church abuse. And so whatever your views are about church abuse, we know church abuse is real when it is when it is done this way. It's not church abuse when churches respond to sin biblically, but it's church abuse when you respond to people unbiblically and then you uh, you use authority against God's people unlawfully and unbiblically. That's when you know that you are out of line and out of bounds. That's just one of several letters, several statements, several messages that I've received from people that have been a part of this church. And some of these people have been a part of ABC since its inception. So why would they have to lie? And these people are, are, are men and women of God, men and women of integrity, never had any problems with the church before until they started asking questions. Until they started saying, well, wait a minute. I don't see that in the Bible. Can you explain it to me? Until they started raising their hand and asking questions is when now they're treated as, as the enemy. I'll read another one. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Here's one. This person. So this is, this is really, yeah, this one is really, uh, hmm. I'll go ahead and read it because you're going to be this individual. I received this one today as well. Again, please share this. Please share this. If, you, if you're in the live, share this on your page right now. Please. Please share this information right now. Share this live on your page so others can, can watch this because you never know. Somebody could be a part of a cult and don't know that they are a part of one. And these examples can show them, oh, man, my goodness, I'm a part of a cult. This person says, here's the info. Hold on to your seats, ladies and gentlemen. If a man, number one, if a man leaves or divorces his wife, more than likely the wife will have to leave the church for a while because he said, that is G. Craig said, that he preaches marriage in there and how are y'all going to sit in here and break up, end quote. I'm going to read that again. G. Craig preaches marriage in there and he says, how are y'all going to sit in here and break up? 
A man divorces and leaves his wife, more than likely the wife will have to leave the church for a while. For a while. Because G. Craig said, not because God said. That's what I want you to catch. Not because the word of God said, not because this is what the scripture teaches. No, 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 no. This is because what, what G. Craig said. That she would have to leave the church for a while because he said that he preaches marriage in there. And how are y'all going to sit in, he, in here and break up? Number two, there are certain people that are watching your page. They're not always befriending you on Facebook because you are their brother or sister in Christ. They are specifically there to watch your page because you represent the church. I need to read that one again. There are certain people that are watching your page. They are not always befriending you on Facebook because you are their brother or sister in Christ. They are specifically there to watch your page because you represent the church. And they're not talking about the church universal. They're talking about the church locally, ABC. You have watchers at ABC. You have six nines at ABC. You have snitches, snitching saints. I didn't know that six nine was a spiritual gift. Did you? Hmm. Three. Your salvation is questioned if you listen to secular music. Like right now. The song is called The Watcher. Dr. Dre. A very appropriate song since you get watchers watching people who come to worship. Unknowingly. Your salvation is questioned if you listen to secular music. And here's the interesting thing. I wonder if G. Craig Lewis's salvation question when he listens to, oh, I don't know, Earth, Wind, and Fire? George, you know, you listen to Earth, Wind, and Fire, George. And last time I checked, you did several, maybe a couple. You did a couple of uh, videos talking about the Illuminati and, and, and talking about how, you know, people are, you know, inviting spirits into their into the ear gate and into their home when you allow secular music in your in your in your home. Only to find out based on reliable sources that 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 Craig, Craig, George, George, come closer. You listen to secular music. You listen to Earth Wind and Fire. You know, the earth, wind, and fire, you know, with the pyramid and the phoenix and, and the eye, you know, all that stuff that you talk about that are, that's the occult. George, G. Craig, I'm trying to figure out here, what's the difference if you're listening to earth, wind, and fire? What's the difference if you listen to mint condition? You know, mint condition is a secular group too. Um... But you say that people are, are, their salvation is questionable because they listen to secular music, but, but, but Craig, you listen to secular music, sir. Witnesses have confirmed, witnesses have told me that you listen to secular music. And the funny thing about that, you know, you violate this one text of scripture here, and I'll just read it for those who may not. Uh, know what it is. I want you to have it that way. When people try to check you about something and they themselves are doing it, you can call them. A, you can call them a hypocrite, and show them why they are a hypocrite. Because you know, if, if that's the case, then you you can't you can't say anything to anyone. You know, George. Romans chapter two. My Bible reads this. And oh, by the way, 
Uh, they don't. They don't. They don't really have Bibles at at ABC. They don't. You know, read uh, from the scriptures. Uh, they read what Craig gives them. I'm not making this up. I'll read. I'm not. I'm not done. <laughs> not done. Not not done. Not done at all. I'll 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 I'll, I'll show proof of that. Um, because you're gonna flip out, y'all. You're gonna flip out when you read these. I had to step back and and grab my head in utter disbelief and shock when I read these these statements and testimonies. I couldn't believe it. But Craig, since you tell people that their salvation is questioned because they listen to secular music and you listen to secular music, then here's my question for you, George. Verse number twenty one. You, therefore, who teach another, do you not teach yourself? You who preach that one should not steal, do you steal? You who say that one should not commit adultery, do you commit adultery? You who abhor, you who abhor idols, do you rob temples? You who boast in the law, though through your breaking the law, do you dishonor God? For the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles because of you. Did y'all just see that right there? <laughs> Sneaker. He said, wait a minute. Say what now? Yeah. They don't. You see right there, Shonda said, they do not bring Bibles to church. Well, that makes sense, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't bring Bibles to church when you don't have a doctrinal statement about the Bible. I mean, that, listen, that makes sense. It, it really makes sense for a cult not to bring Bibles or encourage their, their people to bring Bibles when you don't have a doctrinal statement about what the Bible is. I mean, it makes absolute sense. It's stupid. It's, it's dangerous. But it makes absolute sense because how, listen people, how do cults thrive? I told you earlier in the post, the lifeblood of every cult are weak men and gullible women. That's the lifeblood of any and every cult. When you have people who do not think like a Berean and don't examine the scriptures because they don't have the scriptures at their disposal. The, 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 the pastor don't know scripture. You can tell that. G. Craig Lewis is not no Bible. Well, Seiko, didn't you used to uh, follow his stuff? Yeah, I did. And I followed it with a watchful eye. When he, when he was talking about hip hop, those some things like I agreed with. But the rest of that stuff, I like now. Nah. But now nah, he's gone way off the tracks. So let me read the rest of these of this, of this statement here, because I want you to I want you to get the, the 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 I really want you to get the 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 weight of what this person uh, who attended this 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 cult witnessed. Number four, if you are a forty plus year old man, I'm quoting quote. If you are a forty plus year old man. How is it that you don't have a wife, end quote? Number five, quote, if you are talking to folks that left this ministry, you have a demon in you, end quote. Number six, quote, that's why I don't fool with some of y'all in here because y'all ain't going to change, end quote. Seven, quote, it's getting crowded in here. So let me start preaching the messages that will empty those chairs because I don't want Everybody, end quote. Number eight, quote, I'm trying to pray some of y'all out of here, end quote. Number nine, quote, if you leave this ministry, just leave. I don't want to meet with you to see why you are leaving, end quote. Let me read that again. Let me read that again. <sighs> if you leave this ministry, just leave. I don't want to meet with you to see why you're leaving, end quote. Does that sound like a shepherd to y'all? Or does that sound like a false shepherd? You know, Jesus talks about those false shepherds. You do know that, right? You know, the parable of the lost sheep? You know, Luke. Um, the Bible says the shepherd leaves the 99 and goes after that one. Not not this one. Not, not, not this so-called shepherd. He says that the, if the one leaves, he don't care about the one leaving. You don't want to know. I'm not done. Number 10. Quote, most of the time when a married couple leaves this church, 
It's always that Jezzy wife. You know what Jezzy is? Short for Jezebel. End quote. 11. Quote. Excuse me, not, not a quote. The women there are rude and very cliquish. Number 12. There is a number to call. Listen, people. I'm making it up. I'm reading the actual statement from this person. There is a number to call if you see any suspicious activity going on during service. Now, you may say or may ask, what kind of suspicious activity is going on where you have to call a number? Hold your hold that question. OK, put a pin on number 12 that I've just listed for you. OK, because we're not done. I want you to put a put a pin on that one because I'm going to tell you what the suspicious activity is. OK, hold your thought. Hold that question because I'm going to I'm going to read another statement that will answer that for you. Number 13. Oh, he doesn't believe in women pastors, but will record his truth behind hip hop at churches where the pastor's wife is a co-pastor. Mm -hmm. So you, you call women who teach and and train and 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 preach to men. You call them Jezzies, but you don't have no problem taking Jezzies money. You don't have a problem taking your people, quote unquote, to Jesse's church to do your videos because it's all about the scratch, the skrilla, the bread, the cheese, the coin, the cash, the loot, the cabbage, the moolah. That's what it's about. It's not about protecting the flock of God. It's not about. Standing on what God's word says, it's about money. You, you're, you're, you're hearing pimpery right now before your eyes. You're seeing it. 14. 90% of his members are under at least 35 years old. Which explains the deception, which explains the manip manipulation, which explains the gullibility, which explains these young young men assuming roles and positions of leadership when they're not even qualified. Because they're young, they're inexperienced, they don't know their Bible, and it shows. The Bible says no student is above his teacher, but when fully trained, will be like his teacher. If you have a no Bible preaching and teaching pastor, you're going to have a no Bible preaching and teaching church. Simple. Because you cannot disciple someone in that which you do not know. No, no, Shanika. No seasoned saints there. Listen, they don't even have any Lowry's in, up in that joint. That's how seasonless they are. They, they don't have nothing in there. No season. No, no experienced saints of God. Nobody that knows the word of God that will take a stand for the foolishness there. And if they do, they've already gone. Number 15. Only members can attend the Heroes Men Ministry or the Proverbs 31 Women's Ministry. Only members can attend the Men's Ministry or the Women's Ministry. This it's, 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 this this whole so <laughs> it's the same man that would talk about <laughs> secret societies and really he's a secret society because only members can attend men Bible studies only women only 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 members can attend women and men's Bible studies only members what you gonna be talking about that that a that a Christian like me can attend hold that thought I'm gonna answer that question for you as well. He is also called some women, quote unquote, ugly on several occasions. He didn't call their names, though. If someone tells you that they left the church and they tried to explain why they left, you need to cut that person off. That's a quote. If someone tells you they left the church and they try to explain why they left, you need to cut that person off. Quote, if you are a man that wears dreads, uh, excuse me. If you are a man that wears dreads, it's not a quote. If you are a man that wears dreads, they will they will work with you for a Sunday or two. After that, you got to cut them off. 
I know that's a fact because I spoke with the with the with the person who wore dreads, went to the church, and and was harassed by the people, by the men there, about his hair. And that is so anti Romans fifteen seven. Because if it's not sin, you can't make your preference someone else's precept and pattern of practice. He said, he, uh, this person said he once said that all he cared about were the 20 people that started the church in his home, basically saying that he didn't care about anyone else. He says that the men that don't attend the heroes meeting regularly are jellyback weak men that has a jezzy wife that won't let them come to the meetings, but he doesn't even know why they can't come. This person says, my husband, for example, works 3 p.m. to 3 a.m. Monday through Friday. So how she says, so he says, she says, how? So I guess that he is weak because he got to work. That's 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 just one statement. I, I, I hope you see why. I hope you see why this is a problem. I hope you see that. Let me read another one for you. Are y'all all right? Y'all good? Okay. This person says, quote, G. Craig puts the members together. A man can't go to a woman and ask her out without G. Craig's permission. He told the congregation once that a man has to go to him. Weird. This person says, so-and-so wanted to date a girl. He told him no and put him with another girl. You want to know the reason why? Not because she wasn't saved. Not because uh, there were some character issues that he was trying to help her or help this young man see that he needed to pump the brakes a little bit. No, 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 no. He said no. Put him with another girl because, drum roll, it was her turn. Mm -hmm. The reason why G. Craig Lewis told this young man that he could not date, he could not court to marry this young lady was because her number wasn't called yet. What? In the R. Kelly, trapped in the closet, David Koresh, Jim Jones, Branch Davidian, Guyana is going on here. If y'all don't see how wicked and how demonic and how full of witchcraft this is, I have nothing else to tell you. And I haven't even finished reading the rest of the statement. But I see why the enemy tries to shut me up. I see why the enemy tries to uh, send people to uh, misrepresent me because I, I, I'm, I'm calling out this stuff. See, when you know your Bible, there's no way in the world you're going to sit under any of that. He talks very bad about members who leave the church and intimidates the members who are still there into not speaking to the ex-members. He makes up lies about them and everything so they can look crazy. He quotes this and says, I love my members, y'all. Y'all go so hard for me while crying but then tells them not to say anything so he can't be held liable. Yeah, yeah, T, her turn. If her number ain't called, then she can't, she can't talk to him. And we think, we think R. Kelly is a problem? No, we, 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 we got R. Kelly in the church. His name is G. Craig. I mean, what, what in the slave market is going on here? And, 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 I, and I've heard stories just recently. You have people from all over the country and even around the world that leave to come to this place 
They forsake, they abandon their families, they, they, they disassociate themselves from their family only to be messed over, messed around, and then have to go back to these very people, their families, who by God's grace, I pray, love them back. And for what? For a man that has made a killing, this man is a millionaire. Do you hear me? This man has made serious wreckage off the videos that he sold. Because he's doing it for profit. Let me read another one. Remember I told you to hold your finger at the question that, that we were um, talking about about the uh about number 12 there's a number to call if you see any suspicious activity what's that suspicious activity Seiko I'm glad you asked very attentive and astute people what kind of activity is this person are these people talking about well I'm going to read to you another statement Here's what, here's what the activity is. Are y'all ready? The cameramen pretend to record. And when they don't like how, it, how someone is reacting to the message, they screenshot the person and report them. So remember when T.I. Was, uh, <laughs> was at New Birth? And he had that look on his face when, when, when Ivy here said that stupid stuff. Yeah. They would have took that picture. His security or whoever would have came there and approached him. They would have marked him. They have a database of people that look funny, their facial expressions, or people that may disagree with something that G. Craig says, like, you know, I don't know, Paul was a eunuch. And you may hear somebody say, no, I don't see that in the Bible. Where did you get that from? And if one of his flunky followers hear that, they dial this number. And that number goes to these people who monitor and they tell them this person was talking bad about Pastor G and all sorts of kind of stuff. Yeah. He said, I do remember him talking about it in a video, how strict ABC is about people dating in the church. Didn't think much of it do now. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't know, Sean, yeah, how long does it, yeah, how long does it really take to know the truth behind hip hop though? Exactly. This is all for money. This is all for money. <clears throat> um, this person says, um, I was looking at at post, <clears throat> I was looking at your posts and replies about cults and that place they refer to as a church. And I agree with you. I don't go to that place because it's not Christian and Bible teaching. It's hip hop, make fun of, and destroy others' place with a few verses at the end. I cannot believe the following in the amens. I, I, I went through some of these things and was given it back. I didn't leave because uh, of that. I left because I thirst for the word of God and was starving every Sunday. Yeah, you know, you're not in charge of your own emotions. Absolutely not. No, no, absolutely not. Um, <clears throat> this person says, uh, thinking about all that place is erroneous with one that I recently thought about was when two men had dreads and were coming to that place for a little while. Craig arranged a meeting with the elders and the two men and asked them to cut it off. One did, the other left. And how they throw guilt darts at working women saying that they want the school system to babysit. The last video he made spoke about a study that said men who had a vasectomy had to reverse it. In which two men did that they know of. The study Craig spoke of said that men needed it. So if you had a vasectomy, man, Craig says you need to reverse that. 
The video was way over two hours, spoke very little of Jesus in the beginning, then no more. This person says, I am 100,000% sure that Craig will have a blast with you on Sunday. I can hear him saying that you are using your little platform on, on Facebook. And I can see everyone laughing and saying amen to it. He thinks that he can belittle others to elevate himself. He does it all the time. And you are right about him not answering to anyone. Not too long ago in a radio interview, an Israelite, who he always mocks in the pulpit, went to challenge him on air and he just decided to ignore him. Now I know the Israelite was in the wrong, but just the fact that when he's being challenged, he doesn't. He thinks he is too good to respond to anyone. Um, he badmouths Kirk Franklin year after year on Sundays about how gay he is. He's doing it for the good, he says. He's doing it for the good of his congregation. Um, he, uh, the earrings, pants, and, and hair uh, is true. This person says that he does not allow that earrings and, 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 and you know, women with pants thing in their hair. Uh, if men have long hair, he's not with that. Uh, most of the women there don't work because it's frowned upon that young women get degrees. He says we were made for our husbands. 80% don't. He mentions Kim Kardashian being a witch and he talks about Kanye every Sunday. Now, if, if, if you are a true expositor, true preacher of the word of God, the last thing you're going to be doing every Sunday is talking about Kanye West, especially now that he's a brother in Christ. Based on his profession, based on what we do see, why would you slander anybody? Why, why would you waste your time that is devoted supposedly to preach and teach the word of God? But see, I know why you do it because you don't preach out of this. He preaches out of this and other lower regions of the anatomical area. And I'll leave it at that. But we don't read the Bible, when you don't teach the Bible, then you have to make up stuff as you go. And this is unfortunately the stuff that you see. Um, let me read this one. This one's gonna blow you away as well. Oh boy. <clears throat> this person says, hey, Seiko, uh, I went to ABC for three years. It was my first church. I was there from the day the doors officially opened to mine and several other members' exodus. Um, I was very close to G. Craig and his wife, Sabbatha. The way he treated me and several other members hurt me to the point that I almost lost my faith in Christ. Thankfully, many of us were able to encourage one another through this time. Sometimes, this person says, it takes getting outside a cult to realize you are in one. Thank you for opening this discussion it is an important one. This, this person goes on and says, regarding G. Craig and his ministry and tactics and how he teaches people, and how he treats people. This person says he is definitely surrounded by yes men. That's the first thing it said. Two, he told me I was to submit to his leadership whether he was right or wrong. What pastor says that? What true man of God would ever tell a person to follow them regardless only a wolf, only false shepherds, not true shepherds of the flock. In fact, Jesus himself said in Matthew 23, let me just read that. Jesus spoke to the multitudes and to his disciples saying, the scribes and the Pharisees have seated themselves in the chair of Moses. Therefore, notice all that they tell you do and observe, but 
do not do according to their deeds. Why? For they say things and do not do them. You follow nobody who tells you to follow sin. Does not Paul say in 1 Corinthians 11, 1, follow me as I follow Christ? Not this dude. He says to this woman, whether he's right or wrong, you follow me. Three, he has to feel like the most influential person in his members' lives. If not, he will demand for you to stay away from wiser counsel. Worst of all, number four, <clears throat> everyone tells him he's right and he's the victim. So he never apologizes or confesses his faults. Rather, he slanders the actual victim to make them appear crazy. Then tells other members they can never communicate with them again. And lastly, this person says, number five. In the last, um, excuse me, in the three years I was there. In the three years I was there, we never, this person puts never in capital letters. We never had Bibles. We were taught from little worksheets every Sunday with his commentary and a couple of scriptures on them. This person goes on to say, <clears throat> I never knew who the Holy Spirit was or understood who Jesus was until I left and actually picked up a Bible. This person says, I can go on. Long story short, I would say you're pretty accurate. Cult stuff. End quote. Now, if I'm lying about this, show me. Prove me wrong. And when I say I have statements after statements after statements of, of quotes and of people commenting about their experience, not one of them are positive. Not one. And I haven't even addressed how this man responded to a woman who was physically abused by, by her, her husband, who's now her ex-husband, thank God. I haven't, I haven't even addressed that. But I'll, I'll address that at another time. Because I want you to chew on what I got right now. How, do, how does Craig counsel those who have been physically abused and violently treated? The same way he treats the people that are under his care now. And don't think for a nanosecond I don't have it. Don't think for a minute that I can't pull it up because I have it right here. But I'll just wait. How do you tell a person who's being beaten, who's being physically abused, who are who who are, are in harm's way? <clears throat> How do you give a person <clears throat> who is the abuser opportunity to work for you? Hmm? How do you do that? So this this is this is uh, <clears throat> troubling to me. Because instead of some of you either calling this man to repentance, you, you're covering him. Jay Bryan, I'm talking to you. I know you're watching, calling you out. And anybody else that is a part of ABC, another bad cult, calling you out. Yeah, the current members will say I'm a liar, jealous. And everything. You know, I'm, I'm telling, them, telling this, prove it. Prove it because I got the facts. I have statements, proven statements. I've had conversations with people on the phone proving that these things are true. Um, <clears throat> where was that? Let me read another one and then I'll, I'll, I'll try to stop here. I just wanted to give you a, uh, an example. I received this one today as well. <clears throat> and I'm reading all these by, by permission, by the way. 
This person says, I am also a former member of ABC. I thank you for all you have said the last week or so about G. Craig. So much of what he has said just goes unchecked. I agree with you that he goes unchecked and just says whatever he wants to say. He will tell you that he has elders, but they are a bunch of yes men. I pulled my family before we before they went to the new building. A few things bothered me and my wife was really fed up. So we left. He is big on quote unquote creation roles. He constantly tells his members that the man has to work and the woman stays at home with the kids. At first, I was like, OK, in the right situation, I can see that. He lost me when he said it's God's command that unless you are living that way, that God will not bless you. That if your wife works, you are living out of God's order. He even went so far as to say, and this was the last straw for me, quote, if you do not believe in creation roles, I don't know why you are here, because that is the foundation for everything I speak about. End quote. At that moment, I was done with ABC. He would tell us that no man would ever want to leave his church, that men love his church. His exact words were, when you leave, it's always the wife or girlfriend that convinced a weak man to leave. Did we not just hear this somewhere else? And notice, I, I don't know this person. Did I not just read this other statement to you by, by, by this other person who said the same thing that this other person is saying? He said, to me, he was and is caught up in pride. He carries himself like he is above reproach. He told us from the pulpit that unless you have been married longer than him and his wife, that you cannot tell him nothing about marriage. He made constant head scratching comments like saying his daughter would never go on a prom because he knows what happens in prom night. Although he made no mention of not letting his son go or not go. I used to go to the men's group. He called it heroes. We would meet once a month on the last Wednesday of the month. I never felt right going. It just felt like a weird spirit was present there. I would just come in and sit down and not want to interact with anyone. I was always thought, I always thought, excuse me, the men there were weak and yes men. He told the congregation that if, if you feel you are called to be a pastor, then go. Why are you here trying to steal my members? Just leave and start your own church. Not let me help you guide or, he, or help teach you God's word and what it means to be called. He told us that we don't need to be friends with people outside of ABC, especially people who left the church, because all they will do is talk about the church or him. Thank you for calling out this cult, brother. End quote. And I think I'll stop there. I think I've given you enough. Again, I got more. I got a whole lot of more. But I want you to chew on that. I want you to chew on that. I don't know what sticks out to you. I don't know what was profoundly disturbing to you. But pretty much everything I read about this man um, shows me. What the Bible teaches in Proverbs 29, 1, a man after being much reproved, hardens his neck, shall suddenly be destroyed and that beyond remedy. In other words, God says, I'm giving you time to repent. I'm giving you time. I'm, I'm sending people in your life. Listen, when you have key people leave your ministry and then you act as though they were not a part of your ministry. You act as though they're not missing pieces or missing major components to your organization. And you don't even give a statement. Those are signs of a cult. That's a sign of a cover up. Because the same way people leave, most people want to leave the same way. The same way people come in, they want to leave that same way. So when you have people who come in and then you try to get them out the back door, this man has gone and told people who disagree with him. I'm going to put you on a 30 day sabbatical. In other words, you're telling people uh, don't come back for 30 days. Matter of fact, he told people that I've spoken with that all because they disagreed, all because 
they did something that he didn't approve of. It wasn't sin. See, that's again, it's not sin. It's not sin. It's just something that he does not like. And he does it to people overall, not all, but overall. He does it to people that are young, that are impressionable, and that are weak spiritually and scripturally. What happened to William Ford and T. Tom Moffat? Good question, Pat. They're not there. They left too. I wonder why that is. I know why. George, you know why, don't you? Don't you, George? Jay Bryan, I'm pretty sure you know why. I would, I would caution you, brother, Jay Bryan. Don't get so close to G. Craig because if he makes a sudden stop, your nose may turn brown. Back up a little bit, my brother. Get in your word. Get with God. Get free. That, 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 is, my, that is my admonition and my advice to anyone. That if this describes your church, that is not a church of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is a cult. And, and for those of you who have been free from that, you ought to be rejoicing and thanking God. For those of us who have never been a part of that, we ought to be rejoicing and thanking God. We shouldn't look at them as basically, oh, you know, how could they, how could they? But for the grace of God, there go we. Okay? Okay. Because this is about spiritual warfare. These are, this is about strongholds. These are about mental fortresses that have set up a blockade in the minds of these people who think that because they get a little bit of prestige and a little bit of platform that they're doing something great. You're not. You're being used. You're being played. You're going to tell me all these people that, that whose statements I've read that they're lying? This, this reminds me of the Me Too movement for those who, who were actually assaulted, for those who were actually uh, taken advantage of. I'm not talking about those, those hoaxes and makeup stuff. I'm talking, I'm talking about real people who were, you know, who were taken advantage of by people in authority, people in power. This is what this reminds me of. You're going to tell these people to their face that they're lying? J. Bryan, Robert Morrell, Clemente Sosa. You're going to tell these people that? You're going to tell me that? Because I've, been, I've invited all of you on this live, every live I get on regarding this man, since you want to defend him and cover for him, I'm going to tell you something. When he goes down, guess who's going down with him? This is why the Bible says, 1 Corinthians 15, 33, bad company corrupts good character. Because who you hang around is who you're going to go down with. And if you're not wise enough to understand that when these people have this kind of control over you, you're no longer following God. You're following man. They have become your Lord. They have become your master. Not Christ. You may say that. You can, you can listen. You can say that. You can have your hands up. You're not following the true and living God if you have to run everything through a man. So that's just part, ladies and gentlemen. That is just part of... That is just a, a that's just a, a, a very small portion of the information that I have received. And I'm constantly getting information. Even as we speak right now, my inbox is getting is getting alerts of people responding. And I'm not saying that to brag. I'm, I'm saying that, that because people are 
actually seeing that, wait a minute, I'm not crazy. That I'm not, I'm not just, just making this stuff up. This, this is actually happening now. This person is saying it. This is why I read these statements. Because I want other people to know that you can come out of this. You can be free. You can really be delivered. We want to talk about deliverance, deliverance. This is true deliverance when you can come out of something that you should have never been a part of. And that's a cult. And God will give you grace. God will give you the strength to come out of these things. Yes, it may hurt because these people that you may have had relationships with don't want to talk to you anymore. Listen, I pray now in the name of Jesus Christ that you will restore, that you will bring healing and restoration and comfort to the people who are affected by this. Because it is not a game. Souls are at stake. And the reason why I go hard at people like G. Craig Lewis, George Craig Lewis, and other false teachers is because of the collateral damage that they can inflict upon witless people, gullible people, who think that they're following and doing God's service when they're not. They're doing man's service. So I'm done. I, I, I'll inform you as things go. Of course, you know, I work during the week. That's what I do. Um, but please share this video. I'll, I'll put, I'll post this on my, uh, on my YouTube page. So where others will be able to watch it and to share with others as well. Please share the video. Please share this video. Not so I can get more clicks and likes. No, share the video because other people need to know the truth. Please. All right. So that's it for me. Hope I read what I needed to share with you all, and uh, I'll um, I'll share more as time permits. Um, low willing. So yeah, thank you, Sister Nisa. Thank you for the encouragement. Thank you. A Amen, Rodney. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely, Sean. They're not alone. Thank you, Sean. Sean and Sean. <laughs> all right. So, um, but let's pray real quick. Father, we, we thank you, and I pray and ask Lord for those who have uh, joined us live that you will uh, help them. Uh, those who are not in cults, those who are not in false doctrine, those who are not in deceptive teachings, that you will help us, Heavenly Father, to first of all know that we too could be caught up into these demonic and this deceptive teachings. And Lord, only by your grace, you have not allowed that to happen. And so, Father, we pray that you give us uh, patience, that you give us the words to say, give us boldness where we need to be bold, give us humility where we need to be humble. Help us, Heavenly Father, to be uh, those that will uh, be uh, able to draw and to snatch those out of the fire while ourselves being soiled and stained uh, by such um, deceptive teachings as well. I lift up churches, Lord, that are um, standing on your word. I pray and ask, Heavenly Father, that you will uh, help them uh, in these last days to, to speak truth, even when it is not popular. I pray for men everywhere. I pray for men that are single, that they will recognize and know, Lord, that wherever you have called them to be, is where you have stationed them to be in their walk in life. Do not let them fall under the manipulative tactics of the enemy through men who claim to speak for you, but who do not speak for you, but they speak out of their own mind. That they must be married when that is not the calling that you have called for them to be at that place and at that season in their life. I pray for women, Lord, that may feel less than a woman uh, because they feel that they must work or because if they work from home uh, or work at home, that they are not a woman. Father, you have called women to be our helpers. You've called them, Heavenly Father, to represent you. You've also, Lord, called them to be our co-laborers in Christ. And so, Father, women have value. They are not less than. They are equal to us in, in worth and in value. And, Father, they have their own place and calling in your kingdom. And so, Lord, let us not devalue that. Let us appreciate that. Let us delight in the fact that, Lord, we have people, women of God, who love you and who are mothers if they are mothers, if they are single, let them know, Lord, that their satisfaction does not come in a man, but it comes in the Son of Man through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And so, Father, we just ask and pray that you will protect the hearts and minds of those of us who have been called by your name. We pray and ask, Lord, that you bring out the truth in, in, in the midst of this darkness. We pray, Father, that you will expose uh, G. Craig Lewis and those who are covering for him. We pray, Father, that the, he would not have any rest until he repent, until he turn from the deception that he has been propagating as being truth. 
Father, we, we look at what others are doing in this world, but Father, we have so much going on in the church that we must first deal with our house before we try to call others outside of the house to repentance. And so, Father, bless us tonight. Allow the rest of the remaining portion of our night to be honored to you. Allow us to have the rest that we need to be a productive people for your kingdom and for your glory and honor and praise. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. You guys have a great evening. Love you all. You know the drill. Whatever you do, do all to the glory and honor of God. God bless.